Replace the anode rod in your water heater step by step is what we're talking about in this video today. Working on your own plumbing, if you're not a plumber, there are certain things that you can still do if you don't want to call a plumber. Changing out the anode rod in your water heater is something that you can do depending on how it's piped. If they hard piped it and everything is a solder joint, unless you can solder, you may not be able to take that apart if it's a Bradford White. Now, what I like about Bradford Whites is the anode rod is actually built into the hot water outlet port of the water heater. Now, if it's not a Bradford White, you're probably just going to need a socket wrench and a socket that'll reach down and get on that anode rod so you can loosen it up and get it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you through step by step as to what you need to do to change that out. Now, some of these are really easy. First of all, you need to turn the water off. Step number one is turn the water off your water heater and turn off the gas, turn off the electricity however your water heats because you don't want your gas to kick in and heat that water up while you've got the top out of it. So that's really the first step. Know how to turn everything off. The second step at that point is going to be to relieve the pressure. To relieve the pressure on your water heater, hook a hose up to the drain valve at the bottom. Now, you're not going to drain your water heater completely. You're just going to open it enough to take the pressure off of it and get a little bit of water out. That way, when you pull the anode right out of the top, water doesn't come up out of it. Now, if you've got a two-story house, you may want to go to a bathtub or a faucet or somewhere on the ground floor, open up the hot side, and let that hot water level come down. Now, depending on where your water heater is, that would be if it's in the garage. If it's up in the attic, literally, you can just go somewhere, open something up, and that's going to take the hot water out. Then hook a hose up to the drain, open it enough to bring the water out. That way, what's in that riser going up out of the hot water doesn't come out. If you have a Bradford White, you're going to want a union or some way to disconnect that water because that nipple that's connected to on the hot side is actually your anode rod. And that's what I'm going to show you how to take out right now. So as you can see, my water heater is not hooked up, but this is the hot water outlet side on the Bradford White. Now I've already loosened this up, but I'm going to teach you a little tip here. If you've got one that is so tight that you can't just put pliers on it and get it out, and it does happen, because after it's been in there for a while and gone through so many expansion and contraction cycles, it may happen. So take your chimney off and put a black threaded T on here, three quarter inch, and turn it towards the T's this way and tighten it down. And then you can take a pipe wrench and tighten it until you see this move. Once it moves, that means the T is locked down on it tighter than the threads here, and you can take it off backwards and it'll unscrew. Now remember, you can throw that T away. You don't have to try to get it off there, or you can fight it if you want to, that's up to you. But this anode rod is going in the trash. The new one is gonna go in where this one comes out. Now, like I said, I've already loosened this one up, so it's not gonna be very hard for me to get it out because they can be a pain and you may have to fight them. Now normally too, the ones that aren't on the hot or cold side, there'll be a big nut right back here in the back that you can put a socket. You may, an, may need an impact wrench or a breakover bar or just a big socket to get that off. So we've already loosened this up, so all I have to do is unscrew it. and pull it out. And as you can see, this is a brand new anode rod. Now, like I told you, what I like about the Bradford White, with this anode rod, your hot water is drawn out right here. The cold water inlet tube has the jets on the side that actually let the water spray out to keep the calcium and magnesium from just settling on the bottom and kind of help keep it up in the water. On a normal one that does not have an anode rod, it just lets the water right out the top. So this does the same thing because you get your hottest water at the top of the water heater and that's where it draws up. Say this water heater was installed in a spot where you don't have enough room to slide this rod all the way out. They make sectional anode rods that actually have a link in it to where it'll bend and move. 
So what you would do is feed in a section, feed in another section, feed in another section until you get all the sections in and get ready to put it back. Now, as you can see, there's Teflon tape on these threads. You want to make sure you protect the threads. That way when you put it in, it doesn't leak. Now guys, putting this back together is just about as easy as taking it out. All you're going to do, slide it back in position, get it where it goes. Like I said, make sure you put your thread sealant on there. And then you're going to tighten it up. Now I'm keeping my channel locks down on the part where I'm not interfering with the threads because I don't want to mess the threads up when I go to make my water connection. And I want to make sure that I get this good and snug because I don't want there to be any leaks on the threaded connection down below. Now, all we've got to do is put it all back together. So at this point, whatever you had to undo on the Bradford White to get the water connection apart so you could take that out, you want to put that together now. Now maybe you had a flex connector on it, maybe you had a union on the water line and you were able to take it apart that way. Guys, if you'll change your anode rod after your water heater's been installed for about one year, this can actually help you extend the life of your water heater drastically. And that can save you a lot of money. So now that we've got that in, what we're gonna do, hook the water back up, fill it up with water, and then we're gonna turn our gas or our electricity back on and enjoy the hot water. Now that we've got everything done, what you're gonna do is turn the water back on. Now, turn your water back on and make sure you've got all the air out of your tank before you turn your gas and electricity back on to it. The reason being is if you drained out too much water and it's happened before and you turn on your electric water heater, you could blow your heating element out. And that's something we don't want you to do. So get ready to turn your water back on. Go to a, a bathtub or somewhere like that. Open up the hot side to blow out any air and give it a minute. Let it run freely. That way you get it all cleaned out. Once you get your water back on, turn on your gas, light your pilot, or turn your electricity back on. This is one step that can help you make your water heater last a lot longer. If you've changed out your anode rod before, do me a favor and leave me a comment down below and let me know how hard was it for you. I hope that it worked out for you and I hope everything went well. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.